In this lesson, we are going to look at ionic solids and their properties in more detail. Ionic solids form when the metals and non-metals react to gain a full outer shell. So the metal gives its valence electron to the non-metal, leaving it positively charged, and the non-metal is left negatively charged as it has gained extra electrons. So the particles within ionic solids are ions, and these ions are held together by strong ionic bonds. The ionic bond is the electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions. So in an ionic solid, each cation is surrounded by anions in three directions, and each anion is surrounded by cations. So the cation is the positively charged ion, and the anion is the negatively charged ion. In an ionic solid, the structure extends in three directions. So ionic solids forms a 3D lattice. This means that the structure of ions forms a regular pattern that extends in three directions. The ionic formula of an ionic compound tells you the ratio of cations to anions. So the ionic formula for sodium chloride is NaCl. But that doesn't mean that ionic solids are made up of one sodium and one chloride ion. What that means is the ratio is for every one sodium, there is one chloride ion. The electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged particles, or also called the ionic bond, is very strong. And this means that it requires a high amount of energy to overcome and break that electrostatic attraction between the ions. Therefore, ionic solids have high melting points and higher boiling points. And these can range from the high hundreds into the thousands. Ionic solids are made up of charged particles, so those cations and anions. This means that they dissolve in polar solvents, like water. And this is because polar solvents have a permanent dipole. So they have a permanent positively charged end and negatively charged end. So the cations are attracted to the negatively charged end of each molecule, and the anions are attracted to the positively charged end of each molecule. When sodium chloride, or any ionic solid, is exposed to a polar solvent, the slightly positive end of that solvent surrounds each negatively charged ion, and the negatively charged end of that solvent surrounds each cation or positively charged ion. The attraction between the ions and the polar solvent molecules is enough to overcome the attraction between the oppositely charged ions and the forces between the molecules in the polar solvent. The ions are pulled out of their 3D lattice as the polar solvent surrounds them. And because the ions are being pulled out of the solid, they are dissolving. And therefore ionic solids are soluble in polar solvents like water. Ionic solids are not soluble in non-polar solvents. So non-polar solvents do not have a permanent dipole. So as they don't have permanently charged ends, the attractive forces between the non-polar solvent and the ionic solid are not enough to overcome that strong electrostatic attraction between the ions. The non-polar solvent cannot pull the ions out of their 3D network because the ions are more attracted to each other than they are to the particles in the non-polar solvent. And the particles in the non-polar solvent are more attracted to each other than they are to the ions. Because the ionic bond is so strong, it requires a large physical force to break those ionic bonds. And therefore, ionic solids are hard because they require a large physical force to break them. However, once those ionic bonds have been broken, the ionic solid will shatter. And this is because the ions are displaced 
or moved out of that regular 3D lattice when a strong force is applied. So here when we've hit this ionic solid with a hammer, with enough force to break those ionic bonds that were between the cations and the anions, that whole lattice has shifted. This causes anions to line up next to each other and cations to line up and sit next to each other. And we have these like charges next to each other and they repel. So the ionic solid repels itself apart and it will shatter. Therefore, ionic solids are brittle because once those ionic bonds are broken, they don't easily reform. The whole ionic solid breaks. As a solid, ionic substances do not conduct electricity. And this is because they are held in that 3D lattice, so in that fixed pattern, by those strong ionic bonds. So each cation is surrounded by anions, each anion surrounded by cations, and they're held in place. They aren't free to move throughout the solid. However, once the ions dissolve, so they're surrounded by water and they're away from that 3D lattice, or once they're liquid and some of those ionic bonds have broken and the ions are free to move over each other, then their ionic substance will conduct. And this is because there are now free moving charges within the substance. So when it's applied to an electric field or a positive and negative charge, the negative ions will move towards the positive end and the positive ions are free to move towards the negative end. As the ions are free to move in the liquid or the aqueous state, they can conduct electricity.